Hello, welcome to the second video in our series of videos discussing power series. In this video, we look at how to find the interval of convergence. And so let's start out by taking what we did from the last video with the uh, power series and altering it slightly. What we're gonna do, instead of being centered at zero, we're gonna allow for the power series to be centered some other place. That place will be called x equals a. So instead of having powers of x, you'll have powers of x minus a. You'll still have coefficients generically called c sub n, and then you'll have x minus a, which will be a known constant, and then raised to the nth power. Our job will be able to find out what x's will make this converge, and it's going to be some interval where a is at the center of the interval, and we'll have to be able to go some distance away from a to add and some distance away from a to subtract that distance is called the radius of convergence how do we find that most often we're going to use the ratio test but if you happen to recognize that the entire series can be raised to the nth power then we can use the root test remember the ratio test we take the a sub n plus one divided by a sub n absolute value and that gives you a limit what's going to happen here is that you're going to um, take take the whole a sub n, including the x part, and plug it into that formula. You'll get out not a number like you did before. You'll get out some kind of absolute value that you um, inequality that you'll have to solve. In the end, if you if you uh, if you juggle it right algebraically, you can represent x minus a being less than some number. Algebraically, that means the distance from A is smaller than that number. I'm calling it capital R, but it is that radius of convergence that I talked about. You start at A, and you go plus R, and you go minus R. That gives you the, an interval where you can uh, basically um, absolute value of X minus A less than R means X minus A is between minus R and R, and then add A to all three parts, and you get the fact that X is between A plus R and A minus R. Okay, now this gives us an interval of x values that will guarantee convergence. You'll be, you'll be um, taking the results of the ratio test and forcing it to be less than one and then solving that inequality. So that gives us convergence. We're not, we're not gonna be concerned about divergence, okay? Um, technically then, this interval has to have a name. The interval is gonna be called the interval of convergence and there's one more part to the, in the mix of this. We have to discuss, well, what about the endpoints? We can talk about all the numbers in between A plus R and A minus R, but what about the actual A plus R endpoint and the A minus R endpoint? So that'll be the last phase of the question where we have to plug in those endpoints and check to see if we get convergence or divergence at the endpoints. Um, that will then result in us uh, going back to the previous series of uh, tests, and at that point, then we won't have a power series. We'll have a regular series, a series of numbers, and we'll have to go and grab one of those tests and figure out convergence or divergence. We won't really be concerned about conditional versus absolute. Okay? If you can include it, if you have convergence, then you can, in you can include that point in your interval. If you have divergence, then you can't. So you're going to use square brackets when there's convergence, and parentheses when it's divergent. It can be both square, it can be both parentheses, one can be square, one can be parentheses, any possibility. So that's enough generality, okay? Now let's get our hands dirty and, and do an actual problem. Our series is gonna be negative one to the n, uh, n squared, uh, x to the n, uh, two to the n. We're not concerned about what function this, rep this is, uh, re uh, represents. We're concerned about what x values make this converge. There's two things that come out of that, the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence. Okay, we're gonna use the ratio test. Remember how it works. There are four different terms. So we're gonna have four different fractions. We're gonna be able to get to the heart of the matter quicker instead of writing a sub n plus one over a sub n. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna basically write out the four fractions um, and basically um, do the division and flipping and all that and have everything you need. So the n plus one guys go exactly where the n guys are in the fraction. So negative one to the n plus one and, 
as its own fraction numerator. N plus one squared quantity is as its own numerator. Uh, X to the N plus one as its own numerator. Uh, two to the N plus one as its own in its own fraction as the denominator. And then in the gaps, what we do is we put in the original terms a sub n. So negative one to the n underneath negative one to the n plus one, n squared underneath n plus one quantity squared, and so on. So we get to this point, and now we just do some algebra, break apart these exponents, make them uh, negative one to the n times negative one, two to the n times two, x to the n times x, break them apart, and then we could do some canceling. The negative one to the n's cancel, the two to the n's cancel, the x to the n's cancel. As far as this n plus one quantity squared over n squared, that limit is a one. You know, the numerator is a quadratic with a coefficient of one. The denominator is a quadratic with a coefficient of one. So yeah, that goes to one. And when it's all said and done, after all of that, what's left? Negative x over two. It's inside of absolute value bars. That's the result of the ratio test. That's the capital L. But we want convergence, so we force this to be less than 1. And we solve that inequality. Negative x over 2 in absolute value is less than 1. And it's our job to solve this. The solving of this will give us the x's that will definitely lead to convergence. Because the ratio test will be less than 1. Okay. Um, when you have a times b inside the absolute value, you can break it up and be absolute value of a times absolute value of b. So negative a half times an x, we can pull the and take the absolute value of each, and then uh, it'll come out as a half. The negative doesn't matter. Uh, multiply both sides by 2, and we have absolute value of x should be less than 2. Okay. Uh, this is centered at 0. We're talking about powers of x. If you, looked at, if you looked at terms, you'll see that there are powers of x. So that goes back to the previous video where we're centered at 0. So we're centered at 0. The de what this means, inequality, absolute value, with a less than all numbers that are within two units away from 0. We get to add 2 and take away 2 from 0. The radius of convergence is 2. What do you add to the center? What do you take away from the center? It's going to be a 2. This, this means that x is between minus 2 and 2, but we got to go check the endpoints to see if we can get convergence at the endpoints. So we put in x equals 2 to check that endpoint. Replace the x with the 2. I should have used a different color. Sorry. And I should have made it larger. Sorry. What happens is those, those 2 to the n's will end up canceling out on you. And you're talking about an alternating n squared. When n is 1, it's a negative 1. When n is 2, it is a plus 4. Negative 1 plus 4 minus 9 plus 16. No way that's going to converge. That limit doesn't exist. What about when you put in a negative 2? Now, something you got to be careful here. I'm going to try to write. Um, well, let's go ahead. and. So the negative 1 to the n and the, two to the negative 2 to the n in a numerator, they will combine to be 2 to the n. You see it happening there. And so those combine to give you 2 to the n, and it cancels with the 2 to the n from the num uh, denominator. So now we're just talking about adding up these squares. 1 plus 4 plus 9. No way that's going to converge. Test for divergence. The limit's infinite. Divergence at the endpoints. So use parentheses, and the interval of convergence is negative 2 to 2. Radius of convergence? is 2. That's what you add and subtract from the center to get your um, x values that, that give you convergence. All right, so this is the classic question that you'll have. Find the radius of convergence, or more likely than that, find the interval of convergence. Tell me what x's make this series converge. All right, we'll come back with lots more examples. Uh, let's go ahead and end this video. Um, my name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this and if you have any questions, please don't be afraid to ask. Uh, comment down below. Reach out to me. And um, I will uh, for sure see you in the next video.